formerly known as Boot Gang. Okay, you go by Holy Gabbana now. Yeah, and a lot, but a lot of people know him as John Gabbana. John Gabbana. Yeah, but I I changed it to Holy Gabbana because you know I'm I'm a man of faith now, of the faith. So since because I'm a Christian, and God He He commands us to be holy, just as He is holy. Right. And then, but what really made me like act the holy, because I'm like <clears throat> I'm sitting in my crib, because I don't go out or do nothing like I used to, like clubs. Like shoot, I used to just like be at clubs a lot, or like different chicks would be in and out my crib. But now I just like I just be in the gym. Or I go home and just like watch a whole bunch of different pastors. And I'm sitting there bored at the crib and I'm like, dang, man. I'm really like, I, in, in that moment, I felt like I was living a holy lifestyle. And my lifestyle is not perfect, but I don't do the things that I used to do and I don't do the things that most people my age do. So I'm like, dang. How old are you now? 26. 26. Yeah. You have gone through so much. Yeah, I'm 26. And then um, I was like, uh, man, I should just start calling myself Holy, like Holy Gabbana. And I thought about it. And I'm like, yeah, I like that. I like that, Holy Gabbana. Then I did an interview. And I, we had an interview like the next day. Or no, I think it was either in a few hours or the next day. And before they was interviewed, it's like, we got John Gabbana, this and that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this and that. But I'm really start calling myself Holy Gabbana. They're just like, Holy, Holy Gabbana. Yeah, we like that. Okay, yeah, we like that. And then just, I slowly just start changing like my Twitter name, my emails and everything. And then I finally changed my Instagram name. And I'm like, yeah. Then I had, I changed all, I made, well, I didn't even change. I made a whole new uh, music, like all my music under the Holy Gabbana. I'm like, yeah, I'm just stick with this. How yeah. was your childhood? Born and raised in Jacksonville. I'm from the west side, but I stayed on the east side, south side, and north side. I stayed all for like a little bit of time while I really like lived majority of my, <coughs> excuse me, my childhood was the west side. Oh, I got West Side tattooed on my neck. Okay. Yeah, I got nine or four tattooed on my stomach. A lot of people question, man, like they didn't know where I was from, but I'm like, that's crazy. Before I got famous, I had nine or four tattooed on my stomach, and I did so many shirtless videos. So if you just go back and look at my videos from when I start coming up, you'll see nine or four right there. So you left that tattoo? Yeah, I even got it redone. I got it like bigger and better, but okay. bef before it was like small and it was a little trashy. But it okay. was still there. But my childhood, um, I didn't have my father in my life. Okay. You know, that sounded like. What was your dad? In the streets. Okay. Yeah. And when I say it, like, every time I say that, it's like, it sounded like. <laughs> it sounded like. Cliche. Yeah. It's, I know it's like the same story. Like, I didn't have my dad. My mom was a single mom. Yeah. I get it. But you know, even though you didn't have your father, because there have been plenty of kids who've been raised by single mothers and had, hadn't gone through a lot of the things that you've gone through. You know what I'm saying? And that's why we just like to, I like to ask those questions, even though they give you, it's kind of cliche answers. You like that wine, don't you? It's pretty cool. You got a little, <laughs> little potent to like. Yeah, be careful yeah. now, because it'll sneak up on you. Yeah, I'm taking it slow. Yeah, take it slow. You're supposed to sip that, okay? Yeah, so, but that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, you don't sound so cliche. But I mean, like, so your dad was in the streets, what, selling dope or just? Yeah, selling dope. Okay. Uh, he was in prison. And um, he did, he saw I visit him when he was locked up, but I'm like, dang, I don't remember that. But my stepdad, he had raised me from since I was, since I could remember. Okay. But he died in 20, 2010 of uh, bladder cancer. Wow. Yeah, he passed away. And before, like when I was, like that was like the saddest thing that I've ever experienced. But as I got older, I started to appreciate the time he was in my life because I got to experience a father. Because like me and my dad now, because I'm like, 
getting closer to God, mm -hmm. I try to attempt to like be cool with him and cordial. But at the same time, it'd be hard for me to call him dad. Pops or something. Shoot, it's hard for me to call my Because you didn't know him as that. Yeah. I mean, shoot, it's hard for me to call my mama, mama. Really? Yeah. Because I, I don't got... Uh, my mama, she trying, like... She be calling me and stuff, and we be texting and stuff like that. But I don't got that type of relationship with my parents. Because um, <clears throat> after my step... But, okay. So, like I said, my dad wasn't in my life. My stepdad raised me until I was, like, 14. Then he died. I don't know if he was in my life for that long, but that's what I remember. 14, he died. Then my mom, a single mom, the whole time since I was 14. I'm 26. Yeah, so... When she had six kids, she was raising. Uh, man, the household was crazy. <laughs> six kids. Yeah. Are I, you the oldest? I'm the oldest out of her six. Okay, yeah. so you did you have to take care of your siblings? Um. Uh, we we looked after each other. Okay. Like my mom, she went buying. She stopped buying after my stepdad died. Man, she stopped buying us clothes, schools, birthdays. Holidays, all that stuff. You think she died with him? Her sure. spirit. Yeah, it, right. yeah, yeah. But even when he was alive, though the household was kind of bad, they did the best they could and tried to like have that family thing. Mm -hmm. But shoot, man, all I seen was them fighting, cursing, like uh, just like that's what I seen. Like my parents fist fight. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I seen. That's um shoot, I called the police on my mama and then one time because my mama was like on the couch, like beating them up and I was scared. So I went in the room and I called the police. My mama was hot. Ooh, I bet she was. She was hot. <laughs> Back then we just didn't say that. We just went to our room yeah. and we let them fight. So yeah, I was, mean, yeah. She was hot. And what's the man? Um look, man, my mama. You know, she knocked my tooth out. She choked my little sister. She knocked your tooth out? Mm-hmm. At what age? I was probably like eight. And she knocked your tooth out? She slapped me so hard, I fell. I fell. And when I fell, my mouth hit like the corner of the couch. Yeah. And my, tip, my tooth had chipped. But she went and, uh, she went and, she got some insurance at her job or something. They went and they filled it in. Oh. And, uh, yeah. But... Shoot, my little sister, she was like six. My mama was sitting on top of her like, you little girl, you this and that, yeah. Choking her? Yeah. And, um, uh, oh, see, my mama, she started watching all my videos since we started watching. So, to my mama, I love you. I'm just sharing my experiences and what I've seen. I ain't trying to talk bad about you. Oh. You know, I ain't, yeah, because she be... Man, she started watching all my interviews and she started calling me this and that. I'm like, look, I'm just sharing from my point of view, my experiences. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I know my mom, she did the best she could. And she, was, she all I know is she did to us what was done to her from her mom and them, or like how she knew, you know what I'm saying? But um yeah, I don't like I don't got no hate in my heart towards her or nothing like that. Mm. Or my dad. But my mom was very abusive. She was abusive. And I just felt that like shut me out towards her. I remember she asked me, <clears throat> she was like, boom. You think I'm me? I was like, yes. How old were you when she asked you? I was you a that? kid. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh, oh she oh, was <clears throat> She asked me, do I think she me or do I think she nice? If she asked me, I'm trying to remember. If she, cause I remember she called me in the room. She was like, boom. I walked in the room. Yes, ma'am. She was like, you think I'm me? And I probably said, yes, ma'am. Or if she said, you think I'm nice? And I said, no, ma'am, I think you mean. It was one of them. But I let her know that she was mean that night. Mm. And, uh, like with my mom, with me. How did she respond when you told her? I don't remember that to be honest, but she ain't like my answer. And but growing up, like I ain't like <coughs> I ain't like my mom. Like I was scared of her. Like shoot, I was scared of. Her. Um, 
she was like, it got to a point where like one, like there was a week where I was staying up, <coughs> plotting to kill my mom. And I was plotting to kill her because I thought she was gonna kill me. Cause she used to like, after my stepdad died, like I said, she was, stuff got worse. No house, like no holidays, no birthdays, no nothing. And then the way she beat us, man, she beat us with the buckle. Yeah. But I mean, that might be normal in some households, but I'm like, there's a thin line from uh, uh, abuse and discipline. Like, I believe in discipline your child, but to a certain extent, it's like once you cross this, that's abuse. I felt abused, like as a, as a child, shoot. <clears throat> I shouldn't be getting beat in the back of my head with no belt buckle or like <clears throat> getting hit with like pots and pans or even getting punched because she was bigger than me. Man, she would get in my face and straight punch me in my jump. And I can imagine like you're not that, I mean, you're tall, but you're, 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 you're small frame. And when I was younger, I was smaller. And she and she was big, <laughs> like my mom was big and had muscles. And she just punched me, she just punch on me. But I ain't never hit my mom back or nothing. But just like stuff like that. But when, um, now when you say plotting a killer, like what were you thinking about doing? I mean, you were like, wait, how old? When I start, when I plotted to kill my mom, um, it's probably like sixteen. We was in the apartment. We was in. We we stayed in Orange Park. Mm-hmm. <coughs> you can get the tea if you need it, cause you know that hotness will soothe it. We was in Orange Park. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, that's good too. Mm-hmm. My husband makes the best tea now. Yeah, that's good. Tea on tea. I'm on coffee. <laughs> that's good. Okay. We was in Orange Park, and my mom was like, "How y'all know I don't plot? How I'm planning to kill y'all?" She used to watch this show. Uh, uh, what's what's this show? Um, it's this show where this where they show nothing but moms, like they they had enough and they killed their whole family. Mm. I can't remember the show. It's like ah dang, but she watched that all the time. Used to, and she'd be like, "How y'all know I don't be plotting to kill y'all when y'all sleep?" Just go in the room and blow y'all effing heads. Oh, wow. Uh, blow y'all effing heads off. And because one point she <coughs> she bought a gun. She bought a gun and she was like, this y'all disciplinary. Nah, no more belts. But What? Mm-hmm. And you 16 years old. Well, I think I was younger then. Probably like 15. So she just said instead of beating y'all, she waved a gun around saying she was going to use that. Yeah, discipline with that gun. Yeah. All six of y'all. Mm-hmm. But stuff like that is terrifying. Of like, course. The what, the what kind of... Yeah. Especially out of the kid. And she may have been trying to... She may have been like... <clears throat> her motive was trying to... I'm pretty sure her motive was like, I'm going to scare them straight. Right. You know what I'm saying? But no, that like really like... That like put... a type of fear in me, like, well, I'm like, I got to kill her before she killed me. She going to kill me. Were you like, worried about your siblings, too, at that point? Or was it just more so, like, every man for himself in that house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be real. I mean, but you would have did them a justice, yeah. too. I'm sure they were scared. Did y'all ever talk about it? Like, Yeah, we talked about it. Me and my, uh, me and my brothers, we was in the room, and we stayed up. And we like, man, we got to tell somebody. Like we gotta tell somebody, but honestly, I was scared to tell. <clears throat> I was I was scared to tell anybody what I'm supposed to do. Like, hey, like I'm scared to stay in my house. Like my mom beating on me. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't, I didn't know I was just scared, but that's how I felt. And I don't. My mom, she probably watched it in my because I don't said in an interview or two that like I used to plot in my head to, like kill her. She probably seen it. I don't know, but that's the truth. That's how she made me. Like I sat. I remember sitting in my room just up. It was a defense mechanism, like yeah. you're trying to, yeah, yeah. Like survive. I was, I, I, shoot, I was probably gonna stab her up while she sleep. That's what I was thinking, cause I ain't had no gun. The only thing I could do, 
But um, I ain't, I ain't never do it. I thought about stabbing her up while she sleep. She was running away, but I ain't know where to go. Like this is stuff I thought about at no older than 16 years old. And uh, <clears throat> uh, but on the good side though, like they kept us in sports. Uh, I played pop one football. Okay. I played t ball. Uh, I ran track. And like I say, she did. She did. Her and my stepdad did try their best to like have like family meals, go out. Um, they took us to uh, Holy. It's it's like Holyville or something in Orlando. Mm-hmm. It's no longer, but uh, like they did try to be a family. <clears throat> but shoot, she ain't know how to control her anger. Shoot, she ain't know how to control her anger. And I don't really know what was bothering her like that for her just to like, man. I, you never asked her. No, but my my younger brothers, they got older. Like, see, I, cause when I was uh sixteen, seventeen, my younger brothers, like shoot, eight, nine, ten, that age, when they got sixteen, seventeen, they throwing hands. So they start hitting their back. Shoot, they start throwing hands. And one of my brothers stabbed my mom. Yeah. Wow. See, when I was, when my my mama, <coughs> my mama, she like 40 something now. Mm-hmm. But. She my age, shit. I'm 40. She had me at 17. Okay. But see, when I was like, when I was uh, 16, 17 back then, I think she was probably in her 30s or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, or younger than that, she was in her 20s. And my my siblings were babies. When they start being teenagers, she in her 40s now. I'm like, she tried, she she, she opened my, I was staying with my uncle last year. And she over there, and my brothers and them ran her out of her own crib. And I'm like, why don't you do them like how you used to do me? Like, how you gonna let my brothers and them run you out your own house? The Unwind with Tasha K show will now be live on Big O Live. We will be breaking some of the most exclusive entertainment news. So be sure to catch me Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. Remember, this is a live platform, so you need to be always ready because you never know when I'm going to hit that live button. So be sure to lose the link below to catch me live all week. You never know. You know how this news be hot. So just be on time. Listen close and listen carefully. The olive leaf extract can reverse high blood pressure and diabetic high blood sugar or the sugar as some of our grandmamas may call it. It can also kill any nasty little bugs in your bodies like parasites, bacteria, fungi, tumors, and much, much more. And if that's not enough, you can also tell certain cancers like breast, prostate, colon, liver, and skin cancer to take a seat because the olive leaf extract has been known to fight it. And their friend lupus can get it too, okay? So I need my winos to be in good health because we have some good dragon to do. So visit myoliveleaf.biz to help get your health in order. All right, winos, check out our Unwind with Tasha K store. We got sweatshirts that say, now nah, I gotta go and I ain't got it. We got crop top wine mug, water bottles. We got it all, okay? So be sure to hit that link below. I, I told her straight up. I'm like, why don't you fight them like how you beat on me? She's like, boom, I'm old now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? She's like, I'm old now. I don't got the energy for all that. You know what I'm but shoot, because I didn't understand it when I seen her at my uncle crib and she have a house and she ain't staying in her house. She at my uncle apartment sleeping on the couch. I'm like, what? Why don't you do that? How you do? Me? You would have never let me do nothing like that. Are your brothers much bigger than you? Pray? Like, nah, they is. Oh. They older, nah. We got the same mom, different dad. They all taller than me. Okay. But. <clears throat> But they not playing that. They fighting. When I was their age, I didn't have it in my heart. Yeah. They fight my mama. But they not playing That's that. good. You never let. You never allowed yourself to be triggered enough to act on it. Shoot, I was scared. Thought she would take me out. <laughs> but I, shoot, yeah. I, 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 wanted to, I wanted to kill her while she was asleep. Like, I wanted to kill my mama at one point. I did. You know what I'm saying? But she put that type of fear in my heart. And you never thought about having a conversation with her about that? 
I talk to her on the phone. I mean, I tell her, like, nah, I'm grown. Yeah. And, like, I ain't really scared to keep my mouth closed on how I feel. I be respectful, but I ain't afraid to tell her, like, how she made me feel and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't afraid to tell her the truth. But I ain't really, <clears throat> I ain't had that type of conversation with her. But I did tell her, she'd be like, oh, I did this, I did that. Well, I did kind of go a little overboard on the beat and just stuff like a that. Little. Yeah, a little. You know what I'm saying? She said, there's some things I didn't have to do and stuff like that. But then she'd name all the sacrifices she made and stuff like that. But I'm like, it's more than just, it's more than just sacrificing. Okay, just because you make a little sacrifices or a lot of sacrifices that don't make you a good parent. Right. You know what I'm saying? She ain't never try to get to know who I am personally. You know what I'm saying? She be like, oh, you my son. I know you. No, you don't. I don't feel like you know me. You know, you ain't never have no come in my room and talk about me. I mean, and talk to me, see what I like, what I don't like. You know what I'm saying? How I felt like my mom tried to make me be what she wanted her, like what she wanted me, to, uh, what she wanted me to be. What yeah. was that? She, um, I don't know. She say she ain't forced me to be no police officer, firefighter books, but I remember she uh, wanted me to uh, like to be an officer and stuff like that. I mean, she she had said a different story, but from my what, like from my knowledge, like she wanted me to be an officer. Um, she didn't want me to date white girls. You know what I'm saying? Like she wanted me to live her what she ain't let me have long hair. You know what I'm saying? It's just like she uh she just she put her way on me instead of just letting me like just be me. And I learned a lot from uh I learned a lot from that. I remember um my little brother, his he got long hair and she uh she wanted to do something to his hair. And she like, he like, I don't want you to do that to my hair. She like, you trying to be like them niggas, this and that. Why don't you do this and that? I'm like, it's just hair. In my head, like, I ain't see, like, see, to me, that's controlling. It's just, it's just hair. It's just, yeah. it's just hair. You know what I'm saying? I understand, like, I have a, I have a four-year-old. I saw, like, are you yeah. a single dad? No. Okay. Yeah, he with his mom right now. He's so cute. Yeah, I yeah. got. I got a four year old, and you know I give him haircuts and stuff like that. But if he be like that, I don't. You know, if he get to a point be like that, I want to grow my hair out and stuff like. I'm be like, okay, you grow your hair out. You know what I'm saying? Just, uh, just keep it neat or done or something like that. But I'm not. No, we are gonna cut all your hair off. You know what I'm saying? Just, yeah. you know, it's. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like that. But it's just certain stuff like my mom was so strict, like we couldn't even go outside. That's why like when I got a certain age on the internet, I got I knew that. Like when I started waking up from that, like I knew it was from us being housed because we couldn't have friends. You we, was out you was outside on the internet. Yeah, I know. But yeah. before like I got to that point, like when I lived with my mom, I couldn't go outside. I couldn't have friends. Like, my mom was strict about these things. And I understand she trying to keep us protected and stuff like that. But I think she was so strict that she was overly strict. And it just, when I got to a certain age, I went overly out. I you put myself out. overly out there. You know what I'm saying? I went overboard. We see it a lot in the church with our kids who are... Uh, who parents are like, you know, uh, pastors or church leaders, you know, they, they shelter the kids. And then, you know, my best friend coming up was the daughter of a pastor. And as soon as she turned 16, like she did everything that they kept her from. She couldn't go outside. She couldn't watch TV. She had to wear dresses all the time. So when she finally got just an <laughs> inch, she went, she went absolutely insane, mm -hmm. pregnant, dating the worst type of dudes, you know, staying out all types of night because she, it was no balance, you know? Right. Right. So right. I understand exactly what you're saying. And it's great, like you 26 and you know, like you've gone, you've spent that much time with yourself to to figure out what triggered a lot of the things that you were doing. Like most people, do, I mean, you got people in their 40s and 50s, 60s that don't 
take that much time studying in herself. Like I spend a lot of time with myself, honestly. That is that is amazing. Like I wish there was a class on inner self, you know, and why we do the things that we do, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spend a lot of time. I spend a lot of time with myself, even to today. But when I um when I got saved, when I got saved, like I start like slowing down a lot, and then I just start like rethinking my whole life. Like okay. God was here in this moment. This is why I do this. This is why I act like that. Like, I talked to my dad uh, on my birthday. I talked to my dad, and I told him, I'm like, man, you see, I see now. I said, I recognized the other day that a lot of my flaws, a lot of my bad characteristics come from you. And uh, I feel he was just like, he took it in and stuff like that. But, um, cause like, I'm not, I'm not unreliable. And when I give my word, like, I try my best to like stick to it. But like, um, my dad, he unreliable to the day. He unreliable. Uh, like, he bad with money, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just he, like from what I, <coughs> from what I see, his priority is not together at all. And yeah, my junk not together. But I, like, but I'm in like the state of mind now where I'm getting all of my life together, like uh, my taxes. My child support, uh, what else? Oh, my credit, like all of that. Like I'm on it now, but I, cause I, my birthday was August. August, I was thinking like how much I'm trying to catch up on, how much I'm trying to catch up on. I mean, I was think I was looking at how much I'm trying to catch up on, and I'm catching up on, and then I'm like, dang, I see this about myself. I'm like, dang, my dad like this. Dang, my dad like this. Dang. And I'm looking at how my dad moving. I'm like, dang. Yeah, the next time I seen him, I said something. He ain't had nothing to say. Yeah. You're wise beyond your years. You know that, right? Oh. Uh, 26 years old. Yeah, uh, yeah, I turned 26 in August. Most people don't get that shit until after 35. If, if they lucky. You know? Like... Yeah, but it's um, I know that, and I see, I know that because, like, I was in jail. I mean, every time I go to jail, well, I'm not going to say every time. Like, I'm gonna talk that. Previously, when I used every to, time you went to jail. yeah, every time I went to jail, the mindset of the men that was in there who was twice my age was crazy. So. Um, in a good way or a bad way? In a bad way. Mm. <laughs> like, they mind. And that's why they in that position. They twice my age. You know? <laughs> so. There's yeah. a lot of regulars that go to jail. You say regulars? Regulars. Like, you know, yeah. you go to a restaurant, they got regulars that come in every day. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of regulars that go to jail. Like, I know my it. cousin is a regular. They know about their first, last day, all the CEOs. They've been with him the entire time since he's been going to jail since he was 12. He's 52 now. <laughs> they, they grow up in the system. I mean, it's yeah. funny, but it's not funny. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you're very, you're, you, you decided, okay, I'm not going. Even though people can say it's in the cards for you to turn out the way that your father did or your mother, you know, uh, trained you to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. By putting all that anger in you, resentment and stuff. But um, at the time when she did, because I don't see none of that. All I feel is just peace right now over you. Oh, that's all God. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just not. You could just tell you like you're in a, you're in a very very peaceful. Like you're grounded. You yeah. know, um, you know it's just it's just. I don't know. Like I said, I just feel like you just. I feel like you just need to be celebrated more, so that you will keep going and that you will keep inspiring and using your life. You know, to well, to show others 
in your situation, whether they've gone through what you've gone through or not. You got people that ain't never went through that shit and still can't get it together. Right. You know? Right. Well, that was, um, that's all I can say about my child. <laughs> by, child. by my child. So it definitely affect, affected your school. Did you ever finish high school? I graduated with a, uh, I graduated with a, a certificate of completion. Okay. I couldn't get my diploma because I didn't pass the FAC, FACT, SC, the FCAT, the FCAT, yeah. yeah, and the SAT. Okay. But when I graduated, uh, I walked the stage and everything, had the cap and gown and everything. I graduated from Lee. Okay. They changed their name, but it was Robert E. Lee when I went there. Um, is it recognized as a high school diploma? No, uh, it's recognized as a certificate. <laughs> I think Florida at one time was just giving uh, people like certificates of completion. Yeah, so it's just showing that I completed all 12 grades. But they told me that I could, like during the summer, I could take the SAT and the FCAT all over again and pass it. And I tried to do it for but like a month. I, I'm like, man, I'm out of school already. I ain't worried about that. <laughs> yeah. And that's when Boot Gang was created? Uh, nah, Missy, that was, I graduated at 17. Okay. Um, I graduated at 17, like a, mm, like a few months. It was the year I was turning 18. Okay. But I was 17 and it was like three, four months to my birthday. Boom Gang was created when I was 20. Okay, so three years after. Mm. So what did you do between that time? <clears throat> fast food job, the fast food job. Um, at 17, uh, my mom, she kicked me out. She was... Uh, after you completed high school? Yeah, after high school, um, my mom, she, got, she found the dude who stayed in Miami. I don't know how they met. I don't know how they start talking internet or whatever, but she met a dude and then she moved from Jacksonville to Miami. She built it up. Uh, she bought a house over there, and um, she didn't want she didn't want to move me because I went to five different high schools during my four years. I went to five different high, <coughs> high schools because she was moving. All she time. was moving a lot, and she uh. She didn't want to move me again because it was my last semester. Uh, my school was about to, I was about to graduate, so she let me stay. She let us stay with one of her friends uh, on the north side. We stayed on Dunn's. and um, like when <coughs> when school was out, like right before school was out, my mom she uh, well her friend it got to a point where her friend was like, "Hey, mom, come get your kids. They can't stay here no more." We was uh, stealing out of stoves and running the streets, coming in late and everything like that. You need some Benadryl? No, nah, I'm okay. You sure? Okay. Yeah, so her mom, uh, Miss Vanessa, she was like, hey, mom, come get your kids. They can't stay here no more. And uh, so my mom, she came to come get us. She came to get us. I was at a girl crib, drunk, getting a tattoo. I knew my mom was coming that day, but I was chilling. She was. She gave me a phone. It was like a flip phone. And when she pulled up, she was calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. When I finally, I finally like uh, when the tattoo was done. The girl I was talking to, dad dropped me off. When <clears throat> when he dropped me off, uh, my mom had the car packed. She was like, since you want to run the streets. And you want to chase after these girls? You can stay here in Jacksonville. My, I remember my baby brother giving me a hug. They got in the car and they left to Miami. Oh wow! Yeah, so you were homeless. <laughs> my uh, my uh, my biological father came. She called my biological father to come get me. So my dad he came and got me, but I couldn't stay with him because the girl. The woman that he was messing with wouldn't let me stay. And they got like five, six kids together. Mm. So I stayed with my auntie, his sister. So staying with my aunt, I stopped working at Popeye's when I turned 18. 
Then I stopped talking to this girl who is now my baby mom, but she wasn't my baby mom then. Okay. I stopped talking, uh, started talking to her. Then um, I was just back and forth in and out my aunt. <coughs> in and out my aunt crib, in and out my aunt crib. Then my aunt said, hey, JJ, they call me JJ on my, on my dad's side because I'm John Jr. And my mom's side called me Boom. My dad's side called me JJ. So if you're around me, you're going to hear some people call me JJ. You might hear some call me Boom. Well, the only person who me Boom now is my mom. Where'd you get Boom from? Because, I mean, my that mom. was like the staple of your, my your whole brand online at one time. Your mama. Okay. Yeah. And I used to not like Boom. Yeah. Like, I remember uh, I remember in school, I mean, I and my mom, because in school, people, my, my brothers and sisters, they'd be like, Boom, Boom, Boom. People be like, what they call you? <laughs> Boom. And I'm like, I go home. I'm like, what is boom? Where'd you get that from? Why you call me that? Yeah. She like, uh, just when the doctor, when you was born, the doctors put you on my hand, and the first thing I said was, oh my boogie boom, my boogie Aww. boom. And she, yeah, but um, uh, back when I stayed with my aunt, my aunt was like, hey, JJ, uh, you can't you know, like, uh, you setting a bad example for your little cousins, uh. So you were already like getting in the streets. You were in the, yeah. You were smoke. You know. Uh, getting yeah. High, yeah. She was, she was like, I'm setting a bad example, so I couldn't stay there. So I moved with my uncle, my mom, brother, and then I was started working with my uncle, and I was <clears throat> from my uncle crib to my girl crib, uncle to girl, uncle to girl, and then uh, we had we planned the baby. She got pregnant. You playing the baby at night? What, 18, 19? Yeah. And the the baby we see now all over your videos? Uh, okay. Okay. She had a miscarriage. Oh, okay. Yeah. She ended up having a miscarriage after like being a couple months pregnant. And uh, after that, she broke up with me. When she broke up with me, like it got to a point where my uncle, he used to lock me out the crib and I had to wait. To he get home to get in because I was letting girls in his crib and he didn't so he didn't trust me to be at his crib by myself no more. So I couldn't I had to be outside. And then my uncle didn't want me to stay with him no more. So like um my mom, she was like, Boom, you could stay back, you could come move back with me in Miami. You could come live with me in Miami. <laughs> I was 20. So, uh, oh, I was 19 turning 20. So I went to move in with my mom in Miami. A fr my mom drove halfway and a, a friend of mine drove me halfway to my mom. So in that meantime, when I got out of high school and when I moved back on my mom, I was chasing the girl I was dating then. And I was just jumping from fast food job, to fast food job, to fast food job. <clears throat> At 20, when I moved in with my mom, her husband let me work with him. He worked at the Miami International Airport. I think I saw that in your bio. Oh, uh, he worked at Miami International Airport, and I was installing cubicles for the white folk who, st who work at there. So um, I was like a handyman. And uh, when I stayed with my uncle, I was, he built pools. So I was doing pools when I stayed with my uncle. I didn't want to work with my uncle no more because we always argued on the job and stuff like that. So I just started working fast food. Um, when I moved to Miami with my mom, I uh, I worked with my, my mom's husband. <sighs> I'm like, man, I'm tired of working. Like, I'm tired of working fast food jobs. I'm tired of working for people. I'm tired of doing this. Um, I tried, I started like trying to be a rapper and I ain't know what to call myself. I tried to use my name, John. I put my name in like rap generators, <coughs> rap name generators, but I ain't know what to use. So I'm like, man, bump, I'm gonna just use bump. So um, I started trying to rap, put my music out there. I'm like, man, this is going too slow. I gotta go viral. If I go viral, then I could do music. 
I've been through enough at this point in my life. I felt like I've been through enough at that point in my life where I could talk about some real junk. And then I'm like, I got to go viral. So I like, uh, like being on like Instagram and stuff, like, oh man, I don't know. I always just know how to get like a lot of followers on Instagram because I know I, I look good and I know like people going to follow me and stuff like that. But I see like, First, I seen Fat Boy, you know Fat Boy SSE. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I seen this man go viral. I seen this man go viral for doing stuff. I'm like, I'm watching. I remember watching his videos on my phone. I'm like, dang, he flashing all that money. I'm like, dang, he getting all them views just for doing this. I'm like, this stuff even looks fake. The money look fake? Nah, like oh, his okay. video, it looks okay. scripted. Yeah. But I see him with a lot of money and getting a lot of views. I'm like, I want that. Because I want to get out of my situation. And my uncle, he told me, he said, I always know I'd be famous. But sure, I don't know. I just think, like, I can't. Well, it worked. Yeah, I mean, Fat Boy SSE inspired me. I seen this dude flashing a lot of money, getting a lot of views. With being reckless, reckless, because <clears throat> this video is a little scripted. I mean, a lot of stuff be scripted. I know the internet not. Oh. But then I'm like, man, psh, I'm gonna do this for real. If I could just think of the most outlandish stuff, then I'm gonna get a whole bunch of views. So I did my first video while working at the Miami airport. I did my first video. Everybody reposted. <laughs> repost what was it? it? Uh, what was that one? I don't think I. Was, I don't think I saw that one. Yeah, it was probably did. It's when I went and fixed my own food at Popeyes. Yeah, I did see that one. That was at the airport. That one at the airport. Oh, okay. I, I worked at the airport. Okay, but that was just you working in traditional fast like. I went. I didn't work there. I just went to. I walked to a random Popeyes and I just did a video. I had my little brother. Mm-hmm. Um, I had my little brother record me. I just did a just did a video. I do remember seeing that video. Matter of like, fact, for people's reference, I'm gonna go ahead and interject it just in case. All right, so we got gunplay in the wine cellar. In the wine cellar, man, this is gonna be this interesting. I know, I know. You drink dope. wine? Yeah, I do. But how do you feel about them uh, now having clinics? To administer shrooms under a doctor's care because it helps. I think with that's good. It yeah. do. It do because when when you do shrooms in 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 a moderate dosage, mm-hmm. you can you can cure your your own like you can stop your own habits. You can cure your own PTSD. You can you like you can help your own shit. You could. You can even plan for the future. You could. I, f- I feel like that's a that's a, a zone where you can manifest the most. That like that shit. And it's uh, some wild shit. I was like, I don't want that. I just give me the coke. He gave me the coke, and I thought it was coke. I hit it right there. And sometimes when you already high, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, and you hit, you take a bump or something, you don't even feel it because you already flushing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you like. And then I'm just like, I'm not feeling that and I'm still talking to him and I'm still high off my other batch that yeah. I had, my real batch. Yeah. And then I ain't feel nothing. And he leave and then I and I keep hitting it. I'm like, why this shit ain't hitting like that? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And next thing you know, my nigga, I say, oh, that's when I started feeling funny, like out of my body. I felt like I'm out of body right now. Like I felt like I can't move, like. It feel like just to move this, like, like just to grab this glass right here would take me probably about 30 minutes because my hand doing like this. Uh-uh. Because I'm feeling like, I, so I got stuck and I went and they, and they said I went into a K-hole. You doing voodoo work to, oh, yeah. to, to beat your life sentence and it was yeah. like everybody in the room just froze up. Let's talk about, you know, this. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, why would you not want to talk about that? Because like, we is like, you know, whether you're Afro-Latina, mm-hmm. whether you're black, it, it, uh, voodoo, I think it was put out there in like a, a negative way. Yeah. But to this day, like it's still heavily practiced. You got a lot of Haitian, you know what I'm saying? Like like women that I know specifically, mm. like one specifically mm. that I've been going to war with on a spiritual warfare. 
Like she's trying to basically, you know. Take you out of here? And everybody I love, you know what, what I mean? Yeah, so it's like, it's real, you know what I mean? For nothing, you feel me? You fix your own mother shit. Remember that shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I do remember seeing that. And uh, that jump went so viral. <coughs> People didn't even know who I was because I wasn't known. They just known some man went in Popeyes, caused a scene, made his own food, and they thought it was funny. Everybody who reposted it, I'm like, just me. That's me. That's me. That's me. That's uh -huh. me. That's me. I'm like, I got to do this again. I'll make another video. It'll get viral. I'm like, I'm on to something. So I do it again, I do it again, I do it again. I just start thinking stuff. Then I start doing it so much. People are like, he like Fat Boy SSE. I'm making videos. I'm like, don't compare me to Fat Boy SSE. His young fake. I'm I'm doing this for real. And Fat Boy SSE caught on. And I thought it was fire because me, I'm from the streets, I got somebody with a blue check mark and a whole bunch of, a lot of millions of views under my post now. And in my DMs, I'm like, oh, dang. So me and him start talking. He was like, yeah, man, I ain't take, I ain't really take it as no beef stuff like that. Cause I used to call him out and making videos. I'm like, oh, people comparing us. Man, I'm about to ride off his name. Then he like, he's like laughing under my post. Then he shoot me a DM. And then uh, we start talking. Then we eventually get on the phone. I'm like, uh, he like, yeah, man, I ain't never take it as no beef stuff. I'm like, bro, how you get all that money? <clears throat> I'm like, bro, how you get all that money? Because, oh, by then, by then I was kicked out. Because when I was working at the airport, my mom, she found out I was doing videos and she said I couldn't stay with her no more. That was that one time I about them put my hands on I about them put my hands on my mom. Oh. But the police was there. Cause when the police got called um in making the videos, the police they came to my crib because my brother, we made a video, my little brother, we walked in the store. They took my bro my brother walked in with a bag. They took his bag, his work bag, because he was walking to work. And I just walked with him, and he was just going to record a video for me before he had to go into work. So when we walked in, the door, they, the people, they took my brother back. When they took this bag, we did the video. We did the video. They told us to pay for We had to clean up the mess and pay for the uh, stuff that we used and stuff like that. I'm like, man, bump on this. I love and then they want to give my brother his bag. My brother like, man, I ain't leaving. I need my bag. They called the police. <clears throat> so when the police came, my brother was my brother was underage. So the, I ran all the way back to my crib. The police they came to my crib like a whole bunch of them, and that's like, man, we have your son in custody. This and that. Then I came. My mom, she just got in from work. When I heard them say they got my brother in custody and stuff like that, I'm like, oh. Hey, I did all, I did that, it was me. It wasn't him, it was me. And then my mom like, what y'all do? So they drove to the scene. Then my mom, she found out what I what we did. And then I'm like, I showed her my Instagram. I'm like, I just make these type of videos. She like, she was hot. She found, cause she didn't know. Yeah. But that's when she found out, I said, the police seen it, they like, we gotta, I gotta stop this and that. I'm like, I can't stop. I'm on to something. I'm like, these videos is gonna get me somewhere one day. It's gonna make me this. My mom, she ain't like that. She punched me in my face. 
Boy, I had a fit. Boy, the police. In front of the police. Yeah, I had a fit. Yeah. And she punched me. I had a fit because at this time, like, I ain't stayed with my mom in three years. I ain't been touched by her since I was a teenager. This At this point, I'm 20 years old. Like, it just, like, I had, like, flashbacks. Uh -huh. Boy, I had a fit. My mom, like, what's up? What's up? The police, they put me in the police. She put me in the car. Because, uh, she was like, she 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 got she got in fight mode, mm. and the police put me in the car. And she was like, "Calm down, calm down. If you don't calm down, I'm gonna have to take you to jail. I don't want to take you to jail." Did she always do this? I started telling the police, "Man, yeah, she abusive. <coughs> I'm scared for my brothers and this and that." She like, "Why don't you get custody of them?" I'm like, "I don't got nowhere to go. I, I can't." Like, uh, and uh, she uh, my mom eventually left. And the police eventually let me out, and then I was I was homeless for some months. Where were you staying though? Just on the street. On the street, literally. I was staying on the street, literally. For were some... you still doing the video while you were staying on the street? Yeah. And that's um, this one. I remember sitting outside of Win Dixie, and I'm on the phone with uh, with Fat Boy. I'm I'm homeless. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, how you getting all that money? Cause by this time I done made probably like 50, 100 videos, mm -hmm. and getting millions of, uh, hundred thousands, millions of views, but I ain't getting no money off none. I'm like, bro, how you getting all this money? He ain't really say nothing. He just like, shoot, bro, you gonna be bigger than me one day. You gonna pass me? Cause he had like three million followers. I probably I ain't even hit a million yet, but he had a few million followers. But he like, bro, you gonna be bigger than me. Stuff like this. But he still ain't tell you how he got the money. No, nah, I was trying to figure out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Because I'm like. <clears throat> Did you tell him you were homeless? Nah, I oh, don't okay. really be putting people in my business. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, what he going to do? He can't help me in my situation. Right. Yeah. Um, but we just chopped it up. Uh, but like my life is like a real life movie because. With me being homeless, um, uh, I was um, I was getting a tattoo. There's this tattoo shop that I always used to go to in Miami, and I was in there getting a tattoo, and um, <clears throat> this rapper Jimmy Dade, he like a Miami rapper, uh, because you know Dade County out there. Uh -huh. He called himself Jimmy Dade. Yeah. This rapper was in the tattoo shop and he like, he needs somebody to be a part of his video. Just act like they're getting a tattoo. I'm like, I could do it. <clears throat> I'm getting a tattoo for real, for real. So he put me in his video. I'm like, after the video, I'm like, bro, man, check me out, man. My name, boom. Uh, I showed him my Instagram. I'm like, cause I looked up to that because he got a lot of women. He got cars outside. He got the he he got the gang with him, money this and that. I'm like, shoot, my Instagram was more popping than his, but I don't I don't care about social media. I I see what I see, in, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, bro, look, my name boom. Uh, just my Instagram. I do videos and stuff like this. Anytime you need me, just hit me up. I'm like, all right, bet. So I ain't seen him in a minute. Like a month later, I was doing this video. <coughs> well, I did this Burger King video. called the police I'm like I don't got nothing with this establishment I just make videos I showed the officer my Instagram she like you can go to jail for this oh. I'm like what and like a month later I get in this altercation I did another video with this man I did a video I pranked this man and I uploaded it like a month later the same, I'm in AutoZone with my brother. I turn around, and the man I did a prank behind me, and 
Well, he's standing behind me and he don't look happy. Like he don't look happy. He mean mugging me. And I'm like, like me back then, I was yeah. hot headed. Yeah. I'm not hot. I'm not so hot headed now. But I'm not gonna say so. I'm not hot headed. Uh, I use wisdom now. But before I turn around, I'm like, what's up? What's your problem? See now, I'll probably be like, what's up, brother? You good? I'm like, what's, what's up? And then I try to like diffuse the situation. But then I'm like, what's up? Like, what's your problem? He like, you put me on Facebook. Uh, you don't, you don't, uh, I got warrants and stuff. I don't want to be out there, this and that. And this. And then, uh, warrants, damn. Yeah, like he wanted to fight. Yeah. So I'm in AutoZone. We arguing. He pull out this bike chain. Like, we ready? I'm like, what? You know what I'm saying? I'm just having to fit in auto zone. They call the police. Police come. I'm like, man, this dude, I don't know what's wrong with him. Uh, she grabbed my ID and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, man, this dude, he just, I don't know what's wrong with him. She's like, okay, sir, well, can you have your ID, stuff like that? She go to the car. She come back. She handcuffed me. And she handcuffed my brother. Aww. And it was like, we got a warrant for such and such and this and that. Oh, be careful. That wine going to spill. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about she that. She was like, okay. she was like, I got a warrant for whatever. Uh -huh. And so what happened was, see, I put two and two together. Uh -huh. Before, when that situation, when the police was like, you can go to jail for this. Uh -huh. When she let me leave, she wrote up a warrant. That's what because these establishments don't know who I am. They ain't on God. Then they ain't know who I was. They ain't know my real name, no nothing. I was just a person on the upcoming. But when the lady, she got my information, and after she done seen what I'm doing, oh, you can go to jail for this. Yeah, she put out that warrant out for me. And then um, I end up getting caught. So I'm in, they put me in the interrogation room. They interrogating me. So you the one we've been getting all these calls about. Cause I told her 441 up. And um <laughs> like uh she like, oh, so you the one who be getting all these calls about. And I was actually prideful that I was in that situation. Like I felt good because I'm like, my name getting out there. Now they starting to put a face together. So I'm gonna be big one day. Like, I mean, it came true and everything, but see, I'm thinking like, like it's, it might've been like genius, but it was like evil genius. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be famous. I'm gonna be big one day off this and I'm doing bad stuff. But uh, I ended up going to jail and I was in there for like 15 days and a little bit of people knew me in there. And it's like, oh, that's that dude off Instagram. That's that this dude off Instagram, this and that. And then, like, randomly, I get bonded out of jail. Randomly, I get bonded out. My mom, she ain't bonding me out. I ain't got nobody bond me out. Like, randomly, I get bonded out of jail. Come to find out, it was Jimmy Day who bonded me out. Oh. And like I say, I ain't talked to him since I was in his video. And months passed by. I'm in jail and I randomly get bonded out and I find out it was him. I'm like, man, how can I repay you? He was like, bro, just go to court. And I didn't see him till like three weeks after he bonded me out. He took me to court because he- He, had, he put that bond out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You know, uh, yeah. So he started taking me to court and, you know, then uh, he started taking me to clubs. And when my mom found out he bonded me out, you know what she told my brothers? What she said? I probably sucked this for that to happen. Oh, wow. She told my, my young brothers that. I mean, I only seen this man one time. I ain't even that type of, <laughs> I, don't, I don't move like that. Yeah. But what she doing telling my little brothers that? Yeah, that's kind of... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. My, I didn't expect I, that now. How I know, because my brothers told me. 
Yeah. Yeah. It got to the point she was telling my brothers, I'm not their brother and stuff like this. And I probably suck. Man. But when he bonded me out, he started taking me to court. Then he started taking me to clubs. I was 20. Out there, you got to be 21 to get in clubs. So I started feeling cool. After these clubs, his homie started dropping me off. Like I say, this whole time I'm homeless. I was homeless on the streets for a while. So what was he dropping you off at? He was dropping me off at this, there's this big building on, uh, I forgot the studio, but I used to sleep on them stairs. Okay. I used to sleep in the staircase. But he dropped me off and he recognized every time he dropped me off to the same spot and not a crib. So one night he dropped me, he dropped me off. He like, bro, why am I always dropping you off here? You don't got no house? I'm like, bro, I'm on the streets. He like, nigga, why you ain't say nothing? Why you never tell Jimmy? I'm like, what am I supposed to say? You know what I'm saying? You know, you're like, nah, bro, we can't have you living like that. Man, I'm going to say something to Jimmy. I'm like, okay, I right, bet. <coughs> Jimmy hit me up. He like, yo, man, Reek done told me, like, your situation. He's like, I want to manage you. I'm like, okay, bet. So he take... Uh, he take me to Olive Garden? No, he take me to, what is it? He take me to a restaurant. He got this contract. He like, he gonna manage me and I can stay with him. I can live with him. So I started living with him and his family. His 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 girl and his family. He had like six kids. So. Oh, wow. And he gave me like my own room. And uh, he gave, there was, oh, the room was actually the studio. But he let me stay in there. It had a couch, so I slept on the couch and everything. So I started living with Jimmy. Uh, yeah, shoot, I was living with Jimmy for a minute. Uh, it wasn't. A, it wasn't. <coughs> so he was managing your rap career, or just yeah. you as just a viral sensation, Both. as you were. Both, okay. because I told Jimmy. I mean, everybody knew, and if you was like, if you truly knew me. And I said this even when I started getting interviews. I never wanted to do them videos. And when I did do them, I didn't want to do them for long. That wasn't my desire. I just used that to get my name out there. Where I got lost at is when I actually blew up from that, I didn't want to lose that. And I'm like, I got to keep doing this so people could still know who I am. And then I tried to do music, but I got so hooked on drugs that I really couldn't be myself. And like I got lost in the character that I was playing. So like my whole, the whole agenda got messed up because I'm just everywhere. But I told Jimmy, I'm like, bro, I don't want to do these videos. I really want to make music. And uh, so he started managing me. And Jimmy helped me create, well, <clears throat> I thought about it, but he made it work. He helped me create a lot of my videos that that people love. Like he helped me create it. Like the dog was his partner dog. The watch that I stole was his watch that I just took back to the shop that he bought it from. And they let me do the video. Uh, the people, Spanish people who, Brought the machete out with his people. We was over there having a cookout and we just did the video. <laughs> yeah. The iPhones that I stole was his phones that he bought. For, he bought me a new phone. He bought all of us new phones. It's like, you need a new phone if you're going to do this. You need a, a better phone. It was his phones. Uh, like a lot of these videos that people love, he helped me create. So you, he, he kind of made it legal so that you wouldn't get in trouble. Because when he took me to court, he said, boom. You could do these videos, but you don't got to do them for real. Man, script them out. This way you don't got to get in trouble for them. That's what Fat Boy was on. He was scripting them out. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's what, so I thought of him, he made it happen. Or why we was in a situation, I'm like, or why we was kicking and doing something, I'm like, man, this would be a good time for a video. Like, um, so, um, like my videos, they start getting like that's when my videos really start blowing up when I was living with Jimmy. 
and uh 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 but I'm like it, then it got to a point where uh he wasn't charging me nothing. But uh I used to come to Jimmy and I'd be like, I felt like <clears throat> I should have been making more money than I was making. Cause I didn't understand like how I got millions of views on all my videos. At this point, any video I drop is gonna get a million. But I really ain't making no money like that. Like up until I didn't want to be book game no more, and I I ain't want to be famous no more. I understood people ain't want to attach their brand to my brand because I was like uh, I was unpredictable. Back then, I used to be pissed off about that, and I used to be upset. Like why I could drop a video and get a million, but I ain't making no money. Why my Instagram got millions of followers, but I really ain't getting no money off of it. Like that drove me crazy. Then I go on somebody Instagram page who ain't lit as I am, but I see you don't got like how they own houses, cars, stuff. Even when I start meeting people, I start like uh, I start linking up with people and they got more than I have, but I'm more lit than them. And I don't, I'm still staying at somebody else's crib and stuff like that. You know, piss me off. I ain't never understand that. A couple of years back, I had a bad reaction to some cheap hair dye, and it unfortunately put me in the hospital. My friends had asked me to seek legal action, but I didn't, okay? And I kind of wish that I knew of companies like Morgan & Morgan. When you're injured, you deserve compensation. And the size of the law firm matters. Morgan & Morgan is one of America's largest personal injury firms with over 800 lawyers and over 100 offices nationwide. And the best part is Morgan & Morgan is completely free, unless they win your case, of course. Over 3 million people currently trust Morgan & Morgan and getting started is super easy. Just check out the links in the comment section for more information now. All right, so we got gunplay in the wine cellar. In the wine cellar. Man, this is going to be this interesting. I know, I know. I know. You drink dope. wine? Yeah, I do. But how do you feel about them uh, now having clinics to administer shrooms under a doctor's care because it helps I think with that's anxiety. good. It do. It do because when when you do shrooms in, in, in a moderate dosage, mm -hmm. you can you can cure your your own like you can stop your own habits you can cure your own ptsd you can you like you can help your own shit you could you can even plan for the future you could i, I feel like that's a that's a, a zone where you can manifest the most that like that shit and it's uh, some wild shit i was like i don't want that i just give me the coke he gave me the coke and i thought it was coke i hit it right there and sometimes when you already high mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and you hit you take a bump or something, you don't even feel it because you already flushing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you like, and then I'm just like, I'm not feeling nothing. I'm still talking to him and I'm still high off my other batch that yeah. I had, my real batch. Yeah. And then I ain't feel nothing. And he leave and then I and I keep hitting it. I'm like, why this shit ain't hitting like that? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And next thing you know, my nigga, I say, oh, that's when I started feeling funny, like out of my body. I felt like I'm out of body right now. Like, I felt like I can't move. Like, it feel like just to move this, like, like just to grab this glass right here would take me probably about 30 minutes because my hand doing like this. Uh-uh. Because -uh. I'm feeling like, I, so I got stuck. And I went, and they, and they said I went into a K-hole. You doing voodoo work to, oh, yeah. to, to beat your life sentence, and it was yeah. like everybody in the room just froze up. Let's talk about you know this yeah, and it's yeah. like why would you not want to talk about that because like we is like you know whether you're afro latina mm -hmm. whether you're black it, it, uh, voodoo i think it was put out there in like a, a negative way yeah but to this day like it's still heavily practiced you got a lot of haitian you know what i'm saying like like women that i know specifically mm. like one specifically mm. that i've been going to war with on a spiritual warfare like she's trying to basically you know take you out of here and everybody i love you know what, what? I mean? yeah so it's like it's real you know what, I mean? well, what was it like when did you figure it out 
like, and when I ain't want to be famous no more, I'm like, dang, okay, so, because I'm like, man, I should have had, like, brand deal, man, <clears throat> when I met, I met Nick Cannon in LA, I'm like, Nick, man, why you never put me on Wild or not? You're like, bro, people scared of you over there, like, nobody ain't want to work with me, but, um, when I start blowing up at Jimmy Crib, Ward Ward Star, Ward Star, World Star, yeah, yeah, pop, yeah. they they hit me up and they was like, hey, we got somebody who want to talk to you. You know, Lil Pump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Lil Pump, he loved my videos. He was a fan of me. The dude, I mean, he's kind of like a reincarnation of you. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was a fan of me, but he loved like he loved my videos. Yeah. When I very first talked to him, like, oh, boom, man, I love you, man. This and that, this mm -hmm. and that. Like, I didn't know who he was. Cultural appropriation. Yeah, like, I mean, like, even today. I know you're going to keep it positive, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say it for what it is. Like, right. Like, yeah. even today, like, I'm bad at knowing who people is because I don't keep up with none of that. And I didn't then. I didn't keep up with none of that. Um, but uh, he was like, man, boom, I love you, man. This and that. Oh, man, watch all your videos. This and that. His manager hit me up. He, uh, his manager, who was managing him then, talked to me. He was like, "Yeah, man, I want to fly you to L.A., have a business a business meeting, man. I want to manage you, this and that." I'm like, "L.A., shoot, that's a dream. I bet, get me out there." So, I left Jimmy Crib. Uh, shoot, I don't even think I told him I was leaving to L.A. I think I did. Yeah, I think I did, but. Um. Uh, I left like every man. I had so much stuff at Jimmy House. When I went to L I went to L A in twenty seventeen. I went to L A in twenty seventeen <coughs> of August. Shoot, I ain't I ain't seen Florida again in like three years. I went to L A and never went back. Jimmy ain't called for you and be like, "Where you at?" Shoot, I was on the phone with Jimmy like, "Bro, I don't <laughs> want you to be my manager, bro." Oh. This is my life, bro. I'm like, shoot. I felt like uh I felt like you ain't bring you managing me, but I felt like you ain't really bring me no opportunity. <coughs> you ain't really bring me no opportunity just like that. But I love Jimmy. I felt like maybe he kept you out of more trouble. Like he gave you a stable foundation. Yeah. It didn't necessarily translate into mon you know, monetize like a monetized uh a partnership per se, but as far as like being that father figure, being that protector, yeah. giving you that foundation, I think yeah. that's where he served at. And them boys, was, them, them boys, was, they had my back. They like, boy, ain't nobody gonna touch you. But when you say, you say, slap this, he gonna get slapped. They like, but we gonna like, they was like, he had his partners, like, mm -hmm. they had my back, like we was like family, and uh, like I love Jimmy to this day. But when I was 20, uh, I moved to LA right like a week or two after I uh, turned 21. So I stayed with Jimmy <coughs> when I was 20. I stayed with him for a minute. He picked me up from the streets. Uh, and he, he helped me establish a lot of my most known videos. You know, so I love him. I just didn't understand like why I ain't had that why I wasn't able to get some opportunities. And then I felt like, okay, LA is the next step. But shoot, I even felt like LA held me back. I wasn't, I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't under the right management then. So Lil Pump's management team didn't really bring you anything? See, all my money was coming through him. Through Lil Pump? No, through his manager. All my money was coming through him. It's like, see, See me, it wasn't me getting all the money and I'm breaking him off on what. You know oh, what he saying? accepted on your he behalf getting, and yeah, paid you. And paid me. It's not how it works. I know. But I didn't know that then. Cause I'm 21 years, just turned 21. Yeah. And I'm just getting out the streets. And so it was a lot of money too. The money that he ten thousand here, ten thousand there. And back then my Instagram page was lit. So I was charging like twenty five hundred for a post. I mean, sure, I charged that now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, but then I was getting like, like, just as I drop a video, 
uh, one of my videos, I drop a promo and I keep that. But that's how I, that's how I ate. Like that's how I really ate back then. Just so, how much was Lil Pump's management team charging on your behalf? And would bring I don't know. To? See, it's like Damn. it's like even today, it's like I'm still trying to get like old contracts still because now I'm trying. I want to be as I should in control right. of my own stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but back then. I'm just like believing everything he telling me, accepting everything because it's like I'm still like I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I was desperate. I was desperate. I'm like the only reason why I created all this is because nigga, I want to be rich. But these riches ain't coming. Like I I think they should. Two grand ain't nothing. At this, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Especially in LA. Yeah. Like, how were you surviving out there? Where were you staying? Like, um, I was staying at his crib. Okay, Lil Pump's crib. No, uh, his manager's crib. Okay. And, but like, like I say, I start, I start busting them promos out. That junk was getting me paid, and then like randomly, Miguel was like, "Yeah, check your account. I just got you some money. I check it. I have an extra ten thousand in there, something like that. Extra twenty, baby." But I'm um, like I'm bad with money too, but I'm just now like trying to get that together. But shoot, man, I would. So where did? Cause I mean, I would, really all my money, the money that I was getting, I was spending on trying to stay out there. Cause I was living in a hotel for months. I lived in a hotel for like eight months. That's a lot of money staying in a hotel out there. It's like three thousand, three thirty five hundred a month. I was paying to stay in a hotel out there. That's a whole apartment. That's rent. <laughs> my, yeah, my, I mean, my rent now that I paid for a two bedroom is nineteen hundred. I was staying out there. I was paying thirty five hundred to stay a month to stay an extended stay. Damn, <laughs> I know. You used to go live a lot. You used to be in a hotel room all the time. That because I was staying and in you there. Have, I remember you have a room full of white girls, and I remember one time your account. <laughs> I think that was when they finally had took your account, and I don't know if you had got it back, but you were having sex on live. I don't know if you. Oh, I was out of town, but at that point in my life, I was like nothing else mattered. Miguel, he got me some extra money. Okay. Like he be getting, like he would. I ain't gonna cap. He would get me like he'll get when he get me money. In the beginning, he'll probably bust me out like ten thousand. Extra two thousand, five thousand, something like that. But all I know, shoot, he got by a hundred thousand and probably break me like ten and say, "This is what you got." Yeah. And that's all I know. Cause he got to one time, uh, Pump and his team, mm -hmm. they called me. They're like, "Boom, man, you got to pull up to the studio. We got something to tell you." I pull up to the studio. They like, uh. Miguel been stealing money from you. And Pump told they told you that. Yeah, they told me. They said Miguel, they start showing me papers and everything. They like, look, you had you had a million here. This and that, this and that. This. A million dollars? I mean, that's what they say. I don't know. But you don't understand the rage that was going through my body when they telling me how much money I earned. And I know for a fact that I ain't see that type of money. And like, they like, look, you should have been paid here, this and that. Boy, I was like, I was probably like, yeah, I would think I was 21. I don't even think I was 22. I was, tw I was hot. <sighs> I was so hot. I was mad. I hopped in that car. See, I wouldn't do this now. But I hopped in that car. I called him. I went, even if I have an enemy now, I ain't going to call you and tell you I'm on the way. When I called him, I told him I'm on the way. I want to see him face to face. I'm about to do something to you. You told him that? Yeah. I had somebody in the car with me. I'm driving, crying. I'm crying. He like, boom. He got his kids there. Please don't. He got his kids there. He like, boom. Please don't do nothing. Now I'm crying. I'm speeding on the highway. I'm hitting like a hundred or something. When I get to his crib and all this stuff on the internet. See, like all this stuff on the internet. <coughs> I get to his crib. I get out of that car. I start banging on that door. I start banging. Hey. Hey, man, next thing I know, like, probably, I went outside too long banging on the door. But uh, next thing I know, 
I see a helicopter in the sky with a light shining on me. I'm like, when I hop on live, I'm like, <laughs> I, know, I think I'm like, look at them. Look at the helicopter. They got the light on boot game or something like that. I don't know why you should do. I don't know why you should talk like that. I should be like, uh, boom gang, you know, yeah, they got this, this and that. They just, I just, <clears throat> I don't know why you should talk like that. But I'm like, look at the helicopter, yeah, man. They got the light on boom game, man, something like that. But the light come, the the the, the uh, helicopter lights on me, and I'm on live, and this video's still out there, and people made like reports on it, and then uh, next thing I know, that street, the whole street, like. Police shoot up the street. It's like a whole team of them, man. I don't know what they called when they called the police. I don't know what they told them. Yeah. But the police was worried, cause they came out, pump out, guns out. Get on the floor. Get on the get on your stomach. Don't move. You move, we gonna shoot you. Man, I I dropped the phone and the live was still going. Mm. <laughs> and it's I know it's still on YouTube. <laughs> Cause sometimes I look, I go back and I look up Moon Gang just so I could like make a video showing like before and now. Mm -hmm. But I seen like the stuff. But they um they told like I had to crawl on my stomach to the police officers and they put me in custody. And <clears throat> uh, I'm like, I tell the police, I'm like, nah, man, this is my manager. I'm just coming here to uh, talk about business and stuff like that. And it was like they told me that they got called for like a a home a threat or a home event or something like that. I'm like, nah, man, I'm just having a friend, trying to have a friendly conversation with my man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then uh, yeah. they checked my car. No weapons was found because mm -hmm. I ain't had no weapons on. Mm -hmm. Thank God, because I usually have a gun on me. Mm -hmm. But that night I didn't. I was just fresh from the studio of them telling me. But um, that night. I mean, when they, they checked me, they checked uh, my old engine I was with, nothing, found nothing. <coughs> they let us go. Miguel, he get on the phone, like, man, boom, you know I never steal no money from you, man. I did this for you, I did that, I did this. You know I never steal no money from you and all this. I'm a very loyal person. Miguel, from my perspective, Miguel looked out for me, and to me, he bringing me money. Like in my eyes, more than anybody else has ever done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like I love him, and I'm a very loyal person. So, Pump Team showing me and telling me that he done stole money from me, he been stealing from them and this and that. He like, man, I ain't stealing nothing from you. So I had to choose. Them or him, I'm like, man, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm rock with you. But then, like, just over time, I start, I ain't liking, like, just like, I felt like it was like the lack of professional professionalism and stuff like that. And, uh, like, but Miguel, he did look out the best he could, though, because I was doing bad out there. Like, Drugs and everything like that. And he who, was who supplied you like drugs? Because I mean, like it, it sounded like <coughs> it went from like the staged chaos to, and then they kind of intertwined this the staged chaos with the drug use. And I guess it was it was kind of formulated in a way because you know how the internet puts things together. Like it was the drugs that caused you to do a lot of the 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 k you know the staged chaos that you were creating online to sell your music. And so in that case, you're saying that, no, this was stage. I did not want to do this. This is something that I used to get my name out there. And and then the drugs came into play. How did how were the drugs introduced? Now, I know LA is on some other shit, but well, in your case. I went to LA for one person, Miguel. Right. Miguel was managing punk. Therefore, I was always around punk. And pump is always uh, pumped up. Yeah. And I got influence. I linked with his plug. His plug was my supplier. And so the money that Miguel is giving you, you you give it right to studio time and the deals. Um, pretty much. Yeah. To them, 
and I started trying to buy, I mean, not trying, I started buying guns. And uh, I honestly don't know what the heck I was doing with my money, but man, that junk was going. And then when I'm all out of money, I hit Miguel up, like, like, what's up? Why I ain't got no type of deal? Or like, why ain't, like, why ain't, like, why money this short for me? Like, uh, <coughs> I was still trying to figure that out. I, I, I get some, then spend, spend it, then I hit it back up, and I'd be like, why money this short for me? Yeah. Uh, what were your drugs of choice at the time? Zans. Oh. It was Zans. But it started out as perks, and I ain't know nothing about Zans. I ain't know nothing about ecstasy. Mm -hmm. I ain't know nothing about none of them drugs. <laughs> but honestly, when I started seeing them boys, being around them boys so much, and then start taking drugs, they rubbed off on me. I tried it. The first day I tried it, man, I remember throwing up in the mall. I was gone, and I slept that rest of the day. And I'm like, I need to try that again. And so I, you like the feeling? Even though you felt sick. I don't know what was going on with the med. Yeah. I don't know what was going on. I think it was accumulation of everything. I mean, your whole life, you know. Yeah. Was just... Oh, honestly. Um, but even being around them, you know, it's like I still weren't happy. I wasn't happy. Uh, I still felt, I mean, I was still desperate. And I still felt like I was chasing money and I was chasing followers. Like to me, people probably think like Boom Gang is a set brand. Nah, nah. It was I just Boom Gang know how to make a viral video. But me, I was still, cause I ain't never had my own house. Um. I own a car, and I, well, I own a couple cars. Well, I own one car. <coughs> it was an older car. It was like a 2011 BMW or something, about 10 cash, paid for. I wrecked it, then I got another car. I mean, I was still labeled to me because I'm like, I got a hustler mind. So I might be dying for a little bit, but I know how to, like. So you were like, I mean, it was just amazing, like how famous you were online. People don't know that I'm famous online, but I'm struggling. Yes, and I'm like, I'm damn, struggling. like the struggle is. Yeah. You know. And that's like, like my yeah. confidence was, like I had no confidence. Yeah. Like, cause like, man, I'm in the streets. I don't know. I would call that confidence because you made it look. Like uh, it uh, was, I mean, children were like, how do you feel about that? Kids were trying to move into your. I ain't mess with it. You ain't like it a lot. Okay. No, I ain't mess with that. Because a lot of kids were now boot game <coughs> and they would make these videos be like, boot game, boot game, you know. Yeah, I ain't mess with that. Chanting your name. Even when I go to jail, people be like, they was in there for doing something, trying to do something I would do. Because every time I go to jail, I go to GP. And it's like, I mean, I want to go to GP. I want to be in there. But and you want to be in solitary confinement because all the. No, I don't want to be in solitary. Oh, I want to be in GP. you want to be in GP. Okay. Yeah, general okay. population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. But, uh, man, I, I honestly, like, I didn't realize how famous I was. And to be 100% real with you, I didn't even know the videos I made was affecting the real world. What? No, nah, I didn't know that. I thought it was just internet. I thought it was just oh, so it was separating. I get it. Yeah, Matrix, I, real raw. Like oh, yeah. it's just the internet. It's just shit we just do. Yeah, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. But when I when I start going to people, people they'll be like, "That's I'll be calm. I'll be like this normal," and I'll be calm. People be like, "Like I remember I met this one girl. She she started shaking. I'm like, you okay? She's like, yeah. You're just so calm. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm a normal person. It's just like, yeah, but I'm just so used to you being so crazy and wild. I'm like, that's just for them 30 seconds of that video. But once that video cut off, I'm back to normal. Like, I didn't know, like, I didn't know it was affecting people, how they think and how they see me. I didn't know none of that. But I'd be out in public and I'd hear how people talk about me. They'd be like, 
that's that dude who be on the internet or something like this. They're probably, they're like, yeah, he do. And they'll probably expect me to do something crazy and stuff like that. And I be used to hear how bad they talk about me. And I'm like, hey, that's what people think about me? Like, I ain't know that don't affect yeah. in the real world. I thought it was just Instagram. Just like, I ain't know interviews was so flaw. I thought interviews and uh, and all the network companies, they had interviewed me and uh, they like helping me or something like that. Well, they just doing it just clout like just yeah. for the, just for the, they to get their own clout and then they interview me act good in my face and then turn around and put my name out there like sideways like so like, they would have a decent conversation with you like this yeah and then turn around and then and only use the clip that they feel that way yeah and, and they cut things. stuff out like you know what yeah. i'm saying well we cut don't this. cut here this is gonna go out <laughs> it's yeah. okay and then, yeah <laughs> they'll cut certain stuff out and then like and make it seem how they want it instead of like I'm like dang that's how like I mean I was 20 21 years old at 22 like I really like boom game really blew up when I was 21 at 22 I didn't want to be boom game no more I got famous I <coughs> I got known 2017 2018 it's documented that I changed my name. It only took me one year where I said, I'm done with this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Was that after? Because I know that 2018 interview with uh, No Jumper. That was in 2018? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was in so 2018. that was right when you was trying to make that transition, but you were still yeah. addicted at the time. Yeah, I was addicted. And honestly, I, I came to that video like that because I was like, man, if I come to this interview drunk, it'll go viral. So you did that on purpose? Yeah, I did it on purpose. But he he the the host of Don't Jumper looked like he was faded too. I don't know. Or was I, he faking it? I, I really can't remember that interview, but this is all I know. If I'm an interviewer and somebody I come in my door, he's this what he say, well the camera was already on. He <clears throat> I do remember him walking us inside. Man, I ain't letting that, man, that, that nigga 40 years old. I would never, it would have never gone down. Yeah, it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have, I would have been like, you gotta go home and, and sober up. And, and I seen some I seen some comments, they'd be like, Adam did try to stop the interview, try to, if I was Adam, it wouldn't have been no interview in the first place. He wouldn't have came in my building. I'm like, bro, you gotta go home. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, Adam is pretty, uh, I mean, you, you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, his content is no different to this day. Yeah. I mean, so I'm sure you probably got a lot of clarity on really what, what happened that day. And um, I mean, Adam has, um, he's scared to sit down with me. Like we've, we've reached out to him. Mm. Oh, he's avoided that. Because like, I feel that he <coughs> profits so much off of our culture. Right. right. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's always projecting just the most ridiculous shit, right? But then when it comes time to sit down if, and be serious about it, like, and and talk to somebody like me, right? Oh, he's scared. Like, literally, his team is like, well, we don't know what she's going to do or say mm. to Adam. Can we have the questions first? Do you, do you, yeah. <laughs> do you send questions to anybody? Me? Nah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I just feel like he's just one of those problematic Cult, like true cultural appropriators who has profited so much off of the demise of black men and black women to the point where I, I feel that he feels that it's normal and one day it's gonna catch up to him. Man, it's gonna to... catch up. He's gonna have to, cause I'm just like, you. there's no way you could be this <clears throat> just, like I watched that interview and I kind of felt like he was faking being drunk with you. Like, I'm, and I'm. I ain't never watched it once. You've like, never watched it? I don't watch my stuff. I don't watch none of my interviews. When you passed out, he laughed, like, and they caught you and put you behind him and he was laughing, taking the picture. Like, he was actually glorifying and you <coughs> having a breakdown. And I'm thinking, like, what if you had a gone into cardiac arrest or something? Like, what, what if you had a slipped into a car? Like, 
Yeah. My thing is, it's like, and he took a pit instead of saying, man, let's call 911 or something like me. I would have probably been like, let's call 911. Let's do because obviously you're too gone. You know, he too old for all that dude in his 40s. Then <coughs> 2018, I was 22. He too old for all that. But I forgive him because I know it's not him. It's that demon that's inside of him. That man got a lot of demons. God say we don't fight against flesh and blood. So I know it's not him, so I forgive him. But and not to say that, like, what you, you know, you intentionally did that, but as someone who, who has a platform the size of his, you would think there would be boundaries to what you put out. Yeah. Like, I have boundaries. I don't do children. I don't do disabled people. I don't do, let's see, um, I just, I just don't do children, disabled people. I think there's one more that I don't know. I can't think right now because I'm, I'm, the wine is on me. But we have boundaries to what we put out. Like, you have to have some type of, okay, I'm going to not go this far. Because mm -hmm. in that case, you you just, All right. what do you stand for? Sure, nah. Nah, I stand for God. No, and I see that. Like, And that's why I was just like, you know what? I'm like, he, there's so much content of him. And I'm glad you clarified it. And the people on my platform, they're going to hear you. I don't know if you know, like we do some really, really powerful, impactful interviews. And they're going to hear what you're saying, right? And they're going to see you. And so everything that we just talked about is we talked about my childhood. Right. We talked about my teenage years, mm -hmm. what I did before I got famous. Right. We talked about when I got famous. Right. Now, we talked about my falling and my fame. Now, how I got saved. This is what my yeah, like, this my this is where my testimony comes in.